Hello Creative Gems, welcome to Creativity. Today we're going to make six different lanterns, all one of a kind, unique looking lanterns using all dollar store materials. And then we're going to add some beautiful embellishments to give each lantern a beautiful glam look. For our first couple of lanterns, we're going to take a couple of these silver metal pencil holders. They have a mesh design that makes it perfect to let light through. Jot makes these in a variety of sizes, but today we're going to be using the jumbo size ones. For our first lantern, we're going to start by embellishing it with some silver rhinestone ribbon. Next, we're going to take one of these plastic wine glasses from this four pack and remove the silver base. We're only going to be using the top part of the wine glass, so put the silver base aside for a future craft project. Using my hot knife, I'm going to cut the bottom of the stem by about a half a centimeter. The tip, the way it is currently, is too narrow, so I want to widen it and I'll show you in a minute why. Our next step is to apply some glue to the rim of the glass and then place it upside down onto the center of the bottom of the pencil holder. To dress things up, we're also going to add a silver bangle so it becomes a border around the opening of the wine glass. And then for the tip of the stem, we're going to place a large diamond shaped clear gem. Make sure the pointy part of the gem is inserted into the hole of the stem and then you can add a bit of glue to make sure the gem stays put. Then we're going to go back in to add some more rhinestone ribbons so the entire lantern has a cohesive look to it. And by the way, I found this rhinestone ribbon on Amazon and we'll leave a link in the description box in case you want to get some for yourself. I love crafting with this ribbon because not only is it beautiful but it can be cut to size and is flexible enough to shape it around corners and curves for your craft projects. Also it is self-adhesive so no additional glue is required. And once I'm done applying this ribbon around the stem I'm also going to take a string of silver beaded necklace and wrap it around the rest of the stem as well. And to keep the beads in place a little hot glue is all you'll need. Next, we're going to take this round mirror, turn it upside down, and glue four small silver ornament balls to the bottom. Position them so a square shape is formed. These ornament balls will become legs for the base of our lantern. And finally, we're going to place the top of the lantern onto the mirror base. If you want to ensure the lantern top stays in place, you can add a tiny bit of hot glue to the rim of the pencil holder and then let it cool until it is dry. This step is optional, but the dried hot glue will create a bit of traction when placed on the mirror so the pencil holder doesn't slide around. And here's what our first lantern looks like. I placed an LED battery operated tea light inside and the light eliminates through just perfectly. If you prefer, you could also lift the top of the lantern off the mirror and replace the tea light with a small pillar candle instead. For our second pencil holder lantern, we're going to need one of these LED hanging lamps from Dollar Tree. These little LED lamps come in black, gold, and this silver finish. They're battery operated and come with a convenient power switch at the top. We'll start by applying a few small dollops of hot glue to the inner rim of the lampshade where it will make contact with the rim of the pe pencil holder. Now, you could stop here if you want, but I prefer a more glam look, so I'm going to bling out the lampshade with a string of silver beaded necklace, as well as some clear flat back gems. And while we work on that, I would like to take a moment to thank you for tuning in to today's craft projects. If you enjoy glam home decor and DIY crafts on a budget, it would help me greatly if you would subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any of my glam home decor DIYs. And if you like what you see today, please give me a thumbs up as well. Your support will really help me continue providing you with more amazing and creative craft tutorials. And the best part is, subscribing and giving me a thumbs up is absolutely free, but will make a world of difference to me.
I think the top of this lampshade is looking beautiful with the additional gems and gives the entire lantern a much more upscaled look. To finish things off, we're also going to add a strip of silver card trim to hide the seams between the lampshade and pencil holder. I love this card trim in my crafts as it is beautiful as an embellishment and if you're looking to create a frame or border. I'll leave a link below in my description box where you can purchase this card trim from my Amazon store. And here's the final look for our second pencil holder lantern. The lampshade even comes with a cute little handle. And here's what the lantern looks like lit up when the sun has gone down. You can actually use this lantern either indoors or outdoors on the patio. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you made this far into today's tutorial, drop me a note with the word lantern so I know you visit it today. For our next lantern, we're going to use this empty plastic takeout container. Make sure you clean out your container before you start crafting with it. What makes this container ideal for making a lantern is not only did it not cost anything, but it's also clear so the light will illuminate right through it. To begin, we're going to need a base for our lantern, so we're going to take one of these ceramic candle holders and paint it. This step is optional if you are okay with the color of your candle holder. For mine, since it is black, I'm going to use some silver metallic paint with some silver glitter added to it. The silver glitter will not only give some shine to the candle holder base, but it will also add just the right amount of texture to the surface of the candle holder as well. what it looks like with the paint and glitter mixture applied. While we let it dry fully, we're going to work on the takeout container by embellishing it with some silver mesh ribbon. I found this mesh ribbon on Amazon as well, so I will leave a link to it in the description box so you can purchase it from my Amazon store for your crafts. Alternatively, you can choose to embellish your takeout container lantern with whatever ribbons, gems, or embellishments you already have on hand. Once you're happy with the embellishments, we're going to take another one of those Dollar Tree LED hanging lamps and place it on top of the takeout container with the bulb inside the container. You can also add a bit of hot glue to ensure the lampshade stays in place. And then we're going to go back in and add some more silver embellishments. Here I'm using a string of silver beaded necklace to cover the seams between the rim of the takeout container and the lampshade. And here's what our third lantern looks like. This one can also be placed either indoors or outdoors. What do you think? This one only cost a couple of dollars to make and is very unique. You could even make multiples of these if you want to place a few of them on your patio table while hosting friends and family for a summer barbecue. For our next couple of lanterns, we're going to be making them out of picture frames. For our first picture frame lantern, we'll be using four of these 4 by 6 silver frame picture frames. You can actually use whatever size you have on hand because Dollar Tree actually sells these in two different sizes. Just make sure all four of the frames are the same size. To begin, we're going to disassemble each frame by removing the cardboard backing from each. With all the cardboard backing removed, we'll need to secure the glass to the frame with some glue. Here I'm using a combination of hot glue and fix-all. The hot glue will dry very quickly while the fix-all will provide a longer lasting hold so the glass doesn't become loose and fall out of the frame. When applying the glue, make sure you apply it in the inside of the frame. You want to make sure none of the glue is visible when looking through the glass.
Once all the glass pieces have been secured inside their respective frames, it's time to assemble the four frames into the shape of a box. This part may be a bit tricky because you will want to make sure each frame is glued straight. It's a bit hard to explain this process, so I encourage you to watch the steps I take for this part. Once the frames are secured together into the box shape, you're going to go back in and cover all the seams as there will likely be some glue oozing out in between the edges of the frames. For this step, I have chosen a string of silver beaded necklace. These beads are so easy to work with and look absolutely beautiful and does the perfect job to camouflage the seams. Next we're going to make the lantern lid. We'll take one of these clear large diamond shaped gems and insert one into an ornament cap. If you don't have any ornament caps or would prefer a shortcut, you could also use a crystal door knob instead. For my lantern, I'm trying to keep the cost as low as possible so I'll be making mine. But if you prefer the crystal door knob, you could find them in my Amazon store and if you buy them in bulk, they may come out to just about a dollar per knob. I'll leave a link down below in the description box so you can purchase them from my Amazon store. Once the ornament knob is created, simply glue it to the bottom of one of these Dollar Tree silver square bowls. I love to craft with these bowls as well because they have a mirror-like finish which helps to amp up the glam factor of my home decor crafts. And with that said, here's the final look for our first picture frame lantern. I have placed the silver bowl upside down on top of the box frame set and the whole lantern is sitting on a square frameless mirror tile. Inside I have placed an LED battery operated pillar candle and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. The top can also be lifted off if you want to replace the candle. Drop me a note in the comment section with the word lantern and let me know what you think. 
For our second picture frame lantern, we're going to need four larger frames because this lantern will be a very large lantern. These ones I'm using are tall and rectangular, measuring 14.75 inches by 7.875 inches. I found these frames at Dollar Tree, but they're not always easy to find, so if you can't find them, you can also use other larger frames of different sizes, whether they're 10 by 8 or 11 by 8, or even larger. To make a lid for the lantern, we'll also need a couple packs of these tumbling tower blocks. The first step is to disassemble the frames to remove the cardboard backing and mat. There are small metal tabs at the back of these frames, so we'll need to lift them with the help of a pair of scissors. If your fingertips are strong, you may not need the scissors. Keep the glass piece intact and simply use some Fix-All and hot glue to secure them inside each frame. Then just as we did before, we'll need to assemble the frames into a box shape. Here my strategy is to lie one frame flat with the back facing up. Then adhere the second frame to one side of it, standing it upright. Make sure it is standing straight up to create a 90 degree angle between the two frames. Then work on the third frame in the exact same manner. Keep in mind that if you're using hot glue, the glue would adhere the frames almost instantly. So make sure you have everything positioned properly before making contact between the two frames. When using hot glue with these frames, unfortunately, there will not be any time to reposition the frames. But if you are using anything besides hot glue, you may need to stand there and hold the frames up for a while before the glue cures. For the last frame, we're going to use Fix-All only, so we have some time to reposition the last frame if necessary. We'll keep the box frame lying flat as we have, so there won't be any worry that the fourth frame may fall out of place.
Next, we're going to cover the seams between each frame with a string of silver beaded necklace. This will help camouflage any imperfections with glue oozing out between the edges of the frame. Once that's all done, set the box frame set aside so we can start work on making a lid for this lantern. You'll want to measure the opening of the lantern so you can size the lid properly with the tumbling tower box. Position the blocks and then start adhering them using some glue. Here I'm using hot glue, but if I were to go back and make this lantern lid again, I would actually opt for wood glue because the hot glue was clumpy and created small gaps between the wood blocks that I was gluing together. Once all the blocks are adhered together, it is time to paint the whole thing. Since my picture frames have a black frame, I'll paint the lid black as well using some acrylic paint. If you don't want to bother hand painting with a paintbrush, you could also take the lid out and spray paint it. Just make sure you apply enough coats and let the whole thing dry fully. With the whole thing painted and dried, we're going to go back in and cover it with some diamond black mesh ribbon. This diamond mesh ribbon has some clear crystal pieces which really amps up the glam factor for us. I have also taken a couple of small box lids and painted them both black as well. And we're going to go ahead and cover those with the same diamond black mesh ribbon. Make sure if you're going to use box lids that one is slightly larger than the other. The larger one should be completely covered on the outside with the diamond black mesh ribbon. For the smaller box lid, cover only the sides with the diamond black ribbon mesh. Leave the top exposed with just black because we're going to adhere a topper onto it. For the topper, what I'm using here is the base of a plastic wine glass. The plastic wine glasses come in a four pack from the Dollar Tree and I love detaching the silver base from them to use in my home decor crafts. The base has a mirror like finish so it's perfect for our lantern. And towards the top of the base where there is a small stem sticking out, we're going to place a crystal door knob on top.
And now we're ready to place the entire lid onto our lantern. And here's the final look for our large tall lantern. I've dressed the inside of this lantern with a holiday theme along with three different sized pillar candles. You can change out the look of the lantern with each changing season if you want and if you make two of these you can display them on either ends of a buffet table. And here's what it looks like lit up after dark. I can't believe how beautiful it looks. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you made it this far in today's tutorial, drop me a note with the word lantern so I know you visit it today. And with that said, let's continue with our fifth lantern of the day. This next lantern is going to be made using a couple of these Hot Wheels race tracks I found at the Dollar Tree. These are great to craft with because they are flexible and can also be cut to size. We'll also be repurposing this empty chocolate box and you can use whatever similar size cardboard box you may have on hand. To begin, we're going to paint two of the racetrack pieces white. You can choose whatever paint color you prefer, but mine will be painted white. At some point, I may make another lantern using these Hot Wheel tracks and paint them black as I think a black lantern also would look exquisite. Just a quick tip about painting the race tracks. Because the race tracks are plastic with a very smooth finish, using acrylic paint directly onto the race track without a primer may be difficult for the paint to adhere to it. So we're going to go ahead and apply a generous couple of coats of paint primer to the race tracks, not only to cover the orange completely, but also to prep it in case you want to apply a different paint color afterwards. And once the race track is completely dry, we're going to go back in and start embellishing it. You can use whatever embellishments you have on hand. I have chosen the silver mesh ribbon, but if you don't have any on hand, you could opt to apply glitter to the race tracks or apply some gems or a different type of ribbon. I'll be applying two types of silver mesh ribbon and both sides of the race tracks will be covered. Next, we're going to take the empty cardboard chocolate box and cover it with some craft paper. This will become the base of our lantern. This craft paper I have chosen has silver grey and white design and I think it will make our lantern base look beautiful once we're done. Make sure you measure each side of the box so you can cut the craft paper to size for each side. And now with the craft paper on the box, you'll still notice that you can see the seams of each corner of the box. So to cover the seams, we're going to use some hot glue to apply some of this gorgeous rhinestone ribbon.
adding a couple of rows of mini mirror tiles on each side as well. I even have some on the inside. This step, however, is optional and you can embellish the base as much or as little as you want using whatever materials you may already have on hand. Next, we're going to build some legs for our lantern base to give the lantern a bit of extra height. These legs will be made by taking four of these diamond-shaped clear gems and inserting the pointy end of each into a silver ornament cap. Affix the pieces together with some hot glue. And when you're done, the legs should look like mini crystal doorknobs that you can adhere to the bottom of the cardboard box base, one on each corner. Now, if you don't have any of these gems or ornament caps, you could simply use small crystal doorknobs instead. I will leave a link down below in the description box to my Amazon store where you may be able to purchase them. And here's what the base looks like with all the embellishments and the legs. Now we are ready to position the racetracks into the base. The racetracks are flexible so they will be easy to bend into an arch like I'm doing here. You can also add some glue to ensure they stay in place, but since my court cardboard box base is pretty deep, I'm not going to bother with any glue as the racetrack pieces don't seem to be moving. And for the top of the lantern, you can place a crystal doorknob on top or a small round Christmas ornament ball. I am making my own topper to mimic the look of a crystal doorknob. And the last step for this racetrack lantern is to place a small mirror inside the base where the candle will sit. And here's the final look for our Hot Wheels racetrack lantern. It's incredible how we were able to transform those orange racetracks into this beautiful glam lantern. I placed an LED battery operated pillar candle inside which can be switched out easily if you want to place a larger candle or perhaps a few smaller candles. For our sixth lantern, we're going to make a tall mirrored lantern using a couple of these 6x6 six six inch square wood panels. And we'll also be needing one of these smaller wood panels that measure 45 by 45 inches. And we'll also need four of these 12 inch wood dowels. For the wood pieces, we'll be using some silver metallic craft paper. This sheet will need to be cut to size according to the size of the wood panel. We'll need to cut pieces to cover each side of our wood panel, starting with the base of our lantern. To ensure a perfectly straight edge for the craft paper, we will use this paper cutter gadget. If you don't have one of these, you could use a box cutter and a ruler instead. And if you don't have that, you can simply use a pair of scissors. I opted not to use scissors though because I really wanted to have perfectly straight edges and it's not easy for me to achieve that with scissors. Once each piece is cut to size, it's time to adhere them onto the wood panel with some glue. Here I have chosen to use clear tacky glue. I like to use this type of glue because it doesn't dry as fast as hot glue and doesn't clump up like hot glue. You would have enough time to reposition or make adjustments to the craft paper before the tacky glue starts to dry and set. If you don't have any tacky glue, you could also opt for some white glue, but the white glue will take a little longer to set.
side of the wood panel, we're going to paint it with some silver metallic acrylic paint. I've added some silver glitter to my paint for extra shimmer. Next, we're going to take each one of our wooden dowels and cover each with some silver contact paper. This contact paper has a mirror-like finish, so from afar they will look like they have a chrome finish. Then we're going to adhere each wooden dowel to the inside of the wooden panel, one against each corner. Here I'm going to use a combination of fix-all for a long-lasting hold as well as a bit of hot glue for near instant hold. The fix-all will be applied to the bottom of each wooden dowel and the hot glue will be applied to the corners of the wood panel where the wooden dowel will make contact. The most important thing is to make sure when you place the wooden dowels inside the wood panel they are positioned vertically so they stand straight up. Then we're going to take one of these square mirror tiles and apply some fix-all to the back before we place it down inside the wood panel. These mirror tiles measure 4 by 4 inches and are slightly smaller than the wood panel themselves. Dollar Tree has similar mirror tiles but I found these on Amazon for less than a dollar a piece. I'll leave a link below in the description box to my Amazon store where you may find them. Then, after placing the mirror inside, I decided to go back in and frame the mirror with a string of silver beaded necklace. Next, we're going to work on building the, a top lid for our lantern using the two remaining wood panels we have. One is smaller than the other, so we're going to place the smaller one on top of the larger one. Make sure when you adhere the two wood panel pieces together that the smaller one is positioned in the center of the larger one. Then we're going to go back in and cover the entire lid with the same mirrored craft paper that we used on the base. For this part of the craft project, we'll need to do some more measuring, so make sure you have a measuring tape or ruler on hand. And remember what they say, measure twice, cut once. Here is what the wood panel top looks like so far. We still need to cover the rest of the sides with the silver contact paper. For the very top of the smaller wood panel, I'm going to place this 5 by 5 inch mirror tile to it. But as you can see, it's slightly smaller than the wood panel, so you can still see the natural wood coloring of the wood panel all around the edge. So we're going to fix that by taking this white metallic marker and applying a thin border all around the top of the small wood panel where it will be exposed.
And with that done, we're going to go back to the mirror tile and turn it over so we can use the blade from our box cutter to remove the four little felt pads. This is so the mirror tile will lie perfectly flat onto the wood panel without any gaps. Now the mirror tile can be placed onto the wood panel with some fix-all. And then we're going to go back in and frame the wood panels with a string of silver beaded necklace. This will also help camouflage any exposed wood panel due to the mirror tile being slightly smaller than the top wood panel. As you can see here, I decided to continue applying the silver beaded necklace around the larger edge of the larger wood panel as well. I think this just completes the look of the lantern lid to give it an upscale glam look. And to finish off the top of the lid, we'll place a crystal doorknob to the center of the mirror tile. Before we place the lid on top of our lantern, I'm going in with a dry paintbrush to remove the pesky glue strings. And finally, our mirrored lantern is complete with the lid placed on top. It's incredible how exquisite this mirrored lantern looks. I will place a tall pillar candle inside and there's still going to be more room for an even taller pillar candle. With the base and the top lid, this lantern stands almost a foot and a half tall. Let me know what you think of the lanterns we made today. In fact, I would be curious to know which lantern from today's craft tutorials you liked best. Comment down below with the word lantern and let me know which lantern is your favorite. And if you enjoyed today's craft tutorial, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up. And in the meantime, stick around and check out my other beautiful DIY home decor pieces.